Hi, I'm Elliot. This is Ron. We're here today at Eckler's Garage. We're working on Ron's 1976 Corvette, the last year of the Stingrays. Uh, this is the first of many episodes to come, and today we're working on taking apart uh, Ron's brake calipers. They've been on the car for a long time, and we're just going to walk you through the process of how you take the calipers off, clean them, check them to make sure they're actually rebuildable, and then go ahead and rebuild them. Okay, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk over to the car and take the brake caliper and remove the brake caliper and disassemble it. We have another set of brake calipers that we took off previously, we cleaned, and they're ready to be rebuilt. So we'll, first thing we're gonna do is we'll show you how to take the caliper apart, and then we'll show you how to rebuild the calipers that we got ready yesterday. Okay guys, first thing we're gonna do now to get a caliper, we're gonna take the wheel off. These have been on a long time, so we're gonna use an impact wrench to get them off. Make sure when you're working on your car, you have a jack stand under it, because you don't want it to fall on you when you take the wheel off. I'm just gonna put the nuts back on, on the studs so we don't lose them. To remove the caliper, we have to take the, the brake line off, going to the caliper first, and you're gonna need a 3 8 fitting wrench will be the easiest thing to use to get them off with. Here's the brake line that we're gonna remove. It's connected on the back side of the caliper and over on the control arm. Wow, that's what happens. Things have been on here for 10 years or more. <laughs> okay, so we got one side loose. Now we'll get the side on the caliper. Okay, here's the brake line. You can see this is new. Someone started to restore this car about 10, 15 years ago and they never finished it. So a lot of things were left undone. Now we're gonna remove the caliper. There's two 5 8 bolts that go into the backing plate that hold the caliper on. I'm using an impact wrench because it'll make it quicker than trying to fight with them. They can be very difficult to get off. You may need a breaker bar to get them loose. And these are the mounting bolts. Now the caliper should come right off. So there's the caliper removed, and you can see how rusty it is from being on there for years. Okay, so here's the caliper that we just removed. And if you see, the caliper has two 5A bolts holding the two halves of the caliper together. The caliper has two halves and four pistons. I did pre-loosen these bolts because they were extremely tight, but I'm just gonna take them apart. Again, they're 5 eighths, So we'll just take these out and break the caliper in half for you. Okay, so we're separating the caliper. It's been together a long time, so it's kind of stuck, so I'm just gonna give it a little bang and then remember to take the pin out. <laughs> there, now we're probably gonna have to... This is rusted in, as you can see, so I'm gonna take a drift pin and, dr and drive the pin out, and you can see it's really dusty and, and corroded. So we're not going to use, obviously we're not going to use any of these parts again, we're going to use all new parts. So I have the caliper apart now, and you can see how corroded this is on, on the inside. This looks really horrible. The thing we did find when we took the other caliper apart, that these are stainless steel lines, so we'll be able to re reuse them. If these were steel calipers, we would have to throw these away, or you'd have to get one of our other products, which is a stainless steel uh, line caliper 
or we have a rebuild service also where you can send away, send yours in and get them lined. And again, the that part is something we'll have in the description for you. If you get end up taking this apart and they are not stainless steel lined, uh, we will give you the correct part number for that item so that you know what to buy and what you need. Okay, so you can see the piston I just took out is in very, very bad condition. And if you look, this is very similar to the one we took apart we took apart yesterday. And you just have to kind of, sometimes these can be very difficult to get out. These are the old, what they call lip seals, and you can see the seals are pretty much, pretty much worn out on them. And this is what happens when they sit, the water evaporates. And if you look inside of this, you can see how messy it is. But the one thing you can see is the stainless steel sleeve in, in here. If that were not stainless steel, this would be all corroded and basically would have to be relined. So what we did, we took these, we took the ones we had last night, which were very similar, and we cleaned them. And you can see we cleaned them, we put rust inhibitor in them and let them sit overnight so it cleaned out any corrosion out of the bottom of them. Then we wire brushed them and cleaned them and we painted them with, with brake, caliper, uh, brake caliper paint system. So you can tell they look very nice now, they look almost new. So right here is the brake caliper kit paint system that uh, Ron used to paint his brakes the red. It actually does come in multiple colors. So if you want to change it to a different color, you want to go with red, green, black, orange, blue, wh whatever color you want, we have a different option for it. So I'd definitely take a look for that. Uh, you can customize it. You don't have to go back to the original color. It really just depends on what you want to do and how you want your car to look. So now we're going to go ahead and move forward and build them. When you clean these, you want to use brake clean and you want to be sure that you clean take off the bleeder on one side and then again one side ha has a bleeder and where the brake line goes in and you want to be sure you spray in there with brake clean and clean them. You can see this one, we'll just pop these out real quick while we're here. And you can see again all the corrosion that's on the pistons from sitting. Uh, I think the car has sat for more than 10 years actually. And you can see from what Ron's doing, you know, once you get an idea how to do this and you can watch somebody else do it, uh, it's not that difficult. It's something you can buy the parts for and handle over a week and uh, rebuild all your brakes if you're not looking to put new ones on or, or uh, you know, if you just want to fix what you got, we, we have all the parts to do that and you can do it yourself. You can see the, this is, this is residual from brake fluid that actually sat in the cylinders and dried up in there. And again, you can see this one how corroded it is inside and that's exactly how those looked yesterday and now they're, we made them into a usable piece but by doing this if you can rebuild them you're going to save yourself a few hundred dollars by doing yourself and rebuilding them. Yeah you don't need to take them to a shop to uh, get these fixed and then as we get ready to rebuild you can see you know we've got a new mounting bolt kit here all the different springs you're going to need new pins new bleeders and we're actually putting on uh, licensed brake pads. So these are actually taken back to, like if you were going to be an NCS, NCRS show car and you want to participate in shows and get judged on it, these are actually approved brake pads for that if you're trying to build that 100-point car or whatever you're doing. And then right here is another kit. We've got, it's got all the uh, pistons and all the different pieces you need for the internals. We do sell it in a kit. Um, so it all comes as one piece. And what we're actually going to do is take all these items and put them into one master kit. And that way, if you want to be able to duplicate the same thing we're doing today, we'll put it in the description. You'll be able to just get one part number and order all the stuff you need to make this uh, happen in your car as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clean up our mess a little bit here, and we're going to reassemble uh, the cleaned up calipers. So we have a lot of junk we can throw in the trash here. And we don't want to use the old pads over, of course, so we're going to throw all this away wipe off our, clean our work area. Because we do not want to get dirt into the new calipers when we're rebuilding them. And we'll just put it right on the floor. <laughs> clean up later. This is a true shop, so we're just wiping stuff wherever it goes, kind of like in your home garage sometimes. This is not your kitchen. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna take uh, one caliper. This is the 
outer half of the, of the caliper. This goes towards the outside of the car, and you can tell by this plug in the side. This, the bleeder goes in this side on this one. So these, as you can see, these are all cleaned up inside. Uh, I used a rust inhibitor inside of them and cleaned up all the rust out of them, let them sit for 12 hours, washed them out this morning with brake clean again, and I painted them. So they're all good to go. Today we're using our premium pistons with O-rings. These are far superior to what they call a lip seal. The lip seal is just a small edge that goes across onto the, onto the wall. You'll see the area for the O-ring is much greater. This is great because you don't drive your car a lot. You know, a lot of these cars only get driven a few thousand miles a year. And what happens is seal tends to kind of push down and, and get out of shape when the car is not used. The other problem with these, they're very, very difficult to put in. Uh, this is from a front caliper, which I don't have with me, but you actually have to place it on the caliper and then work a small screwdriver around the edge to get it into the brake cylinder. The problem is they're very, very easy to rip because if you look, this is very thin rubber on the edge. And this just makes a much better build and it's much quicker. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the springs. So the springs are old and worn out, so you wanna put new springs in. And again, I mean, you look at the springs here and you look and they go, well, it, you know, if I clean them up, they probably wouldn't be so bad, but it's not worth doing all this work and to skimp out on not putting the new springs in. No, you might as well do the full job. And you don't want to mess with your brakes. Yeah. You know, especially if you're going to be driving this or it's going to be a little bit of a driver where you want to run around and have fun with it, just do the job right, take the time, put all new parts in. That way it's good to go for a long time to come and you're not redoing this job in another couple of years or anytime soon. Okay, so we are... All set, we got the springs just kind of, they just kind of sit down in there in the bottom. Okay, and you'll see the piston will go in, sits, sits on the spring, they go in, and the piston sits on them. So, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the O-ring onto the piston. And this can be, you gotta kind of just roll these on here. Okay, so you're going to see the spring fits in the piston. And then what we're going to do is this is the, the dust shield that goes on the top of the piston. So these just kind of slide over the end of the, end of the piston. And there we go. So that piston's ready to go in. So the one thing you want to do before you put the piston is you want to take a little brake fluid, wear a pair of gloves, of course, and just a little lubricant on the cylinder will make it slide in a little easier. And I also always put a little right around. And you gotta make sure you put the spring in there. And you put this in there. This goes down and fits into the, fits into the edge. Okay, so now I got a socket that's just about the size of the outside of the uh, the dust shield, make sure you line it up pretty good because you don't want to break the dust shield. And there you go, your new piston is just about in. Just gonna tap all the edges, make sure it's good and tight. Okay, so that one's in, your piston's in, and that's how you put a piston in. And of course it pops right out. So that one's all good to go. You can see how nice these pistons work if you press down on them straight. They'll pop right out again. So these are. So you can see how easy it is to assemble back together. Once you get it apart, you get it cleaned up, you get it painted and then you've got the proper pieces to assemble it. It's not that difficult of a job. You can put it back together. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the other side done and then we'll join you back when we're ready to put them back together. 
So Ron has finished getting all the pistons back into both calipers. So he's going to go ahead and show you the last couple steps to get it fully reassembled and ready to go back onto the car. Okay, there's a little O-ring that goes between the, the two cylinder halves. You'll see there's a little uh, embossed area right here. Make sure you put the O-ring in there. Then take your two caliper halves. You put them back on top of each other. You have two new, two new bolts to hold it together. Again, it's important to use all new items so that you're not redoing this a couple months, a couple years down the road. You want to do this with good, high quality pieces so that it lasts for a long time, as long as you're probably going to own the car or even pass it on to one of your kids or family or sell it. These, these are 7 16 20 bolts. These will be included in the kit. So you don't have to go chasing them around at the hardware store. You gotta turn the nut the right way. <laughs> Make sure you kind of keep pressure on it when you're putting it together so the O-ring doesn't slip. If I was smart, I would have put a rag under this so I don't scratch my paint job. <laughs> you can always touch them up later when you get done if you mark them up because it's always the potential to do that. Make sure these are nice and tight. And really, it really the, the paint job only matters on the one that's outward facing anyways. I mean, you want to paint them both and you want them to look nice. But if you do scratch one side, if it's the inside, you know, it's not as bad as scratching the outside that's visible to uh, everybody walking by. Right. So just like I said, give them an extra. You're not going to break these bolts by any means. These are use grade eight bolt. These are grade eight bolts. You want to make sure you use a nice strong bolt. Okay, so here's our caliper. Just about done. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to put, make sure you change your bleeders because the bleeders tend to clog when they get old. So we're going to take, take a brand new bleeder. Screw in the bleeder. I'm just going to leave it loose right now because when we put the car back together, we'll show you how to bleed the brakes. So we have all our pistons in. We're in good shape, all rebuilt, ready to go. So now we're going to take our, our brake pads. And we do sell a, a wide variety of brake pads. Uh, these ones right here just happen to be the reproduction version. But, you know, we have high-end brake pads, driver-level brake pads, really whatever brake pad you want to suit what you're going to do. Uh, we have a variety of options. You know, depending on whether you're racing the car or street, uh, just street driving, these are factory originals. If you're going to have a daily driver, these would be just fine. Here is a new, a new pin, not rusty, not corroded. So the... Just goes through the uh, through the pads. There's your caliper, all rebuilt. We just need to put the Carter pin in. A pair of dikes. Or you just take one half, bend it over. You'll see these are much better than what was in here before. And I always just, I always just cut the other half. So when you go to take it, have to take it back out. It's not that bad. So this is our rebuilt caliper. As you can see, from what we started with, we have a dirty one here. Yeah. So if you look, this is what we have now. This is what we had yesterday. So again, I'm Elliot. This is Ron. Thanks for joining us today on Eckler's Garage, the first of many episodes to come. Uh, join us back here next week. We're going to take apart the rear suspension and kind of show you how to get that off the car. And we'll follow that up later with how to rebuild it and get things back together. Anything you want to say, Ron? No, just thanks for watching. We hope this was useful. Uh, besides having the parts listed, we're also going to have a PDF file for you to download with still pictures. So you kind of have a little direction and what you're doing when you're rebuilding your brakes. So a bit of an instruction manual to go along with the video. So again, this is new to us. We're getting back at this. If there's any videos you'd like to see, any comments, any questions you have, please leave that in the uh, comments below, and we'll be happy to answer your questions or even queue up a video for something you guys would like to see. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Eckler's Garage.